Okay, so um, good morning everyone. My name is Vinesh Sukumaran and uh, I will be taking you through this one hour webinar. It's uh, exactly 11 o'clock and uh, I'd like to thank all of you for uh, taking your time out on a, on a busy Thursday to, uh, you know, to be part of this. Um, for those of you who are part of this webinar for the first time, you can please mute yourself. If not, I would be muting you anyway. And uh, if you do have any questions, please put your questions up on the uh, chat screen. You'll see if, if you're on GoToMeeting, you'll see a screen called chat. If you just click on it, you'll see the messages there. The last message I put up was how we're going to start at 11 o'clock. Um, so you can put your questions there. I'll be watching the questions and I will answer them as we go along. Um, if you have something to share, if you have some thoughts, you can also put them up there. Uh, you will be listening to me through your, through your audio system, you know, through your speakers or your, uh, the equivalent of that would be your uh, headphones. Okay. And you can communicate back to me. You can share something, ask me something through the chat screen. Okay. So, uh, the topic as we've uh, arrived on for, for this webinar is uh, becoming a master trainer and uh, why at Bodhi we think this is the ultimate career choice. Okay, so uh, I, I see I see a lot of, I see some familiar names and some, some new names. So um, those of you who haven't uh, been, I also see some names of people who probably haven't been to a Bodhi program ever. So just to give you an idea of the, of the flow, uh, we will start with understanding who we are and what we do at Bodhi. Uh, we'll then move on to some of the new career options and, and, and you know, some thoughts about that. Uh, what is master training? Getting an understanding of what master training is. And finally, moving on to why master training might suit anyone. And we will end the session with a Q&A. Well, I, I'm saying that we will end the session with a Q&A, but you, you really don't have to wait uh, till the fag end to ask me anything. If you have questions, wherever, whenever you can put them up on the chat screen and I will either answer them at a relevant point or I, I, I'll, I'll answer them right away or, or in the end. Okay, so let me, let me, let me get into the, to the, to the crux of the matter. Uh, those of you who just came in, uh, good morning. My name is Vinesh Sukumaran. I'm the principal consultant at Bodhi Training Solutions and I will uh, be anchoring and running you through this webinar. Okay, so to tell you a bit about Bodhi, we are primarily into the business of organizational development and the manner in which we provide it is by, uh, is, is by, is by training individuals and is, is through self-development, okay? And these are the areas on which we train, sales, HR, leadership, communication, soft skills, or what's also called behavioral skills. Uh, we have uh, worked with 1,000 plus clients and we've helped a lot of clients build internal training competence. We have a very structured approach to training. Those of you who have attended our Train the Trainer or uh, a foundation course would be aware of that. And all our workshops are also hands-on and experiential. We are also an ISO company certified by this rather elite German body called TUV, Tufsud. So all the processes that we follow are based on ISO standards. And uh, we are also quite active on the social media these days. So those of you who aren't following us on Twitter, uh, at Bodhi Training is the Twitter handle or uh, this is our Facebook ID, the link is there, you, you, can, you can make a note of it. Okay, so let me, let me get into the main part. I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are not here to hear about what Bodhi is and what Bodhi does, uh, you know. So let me, let me get into what we're doing in this webinar and what's the focus here. So the focus really is this. One is we, as a result of the workshops that we do, both with corporate clients, you know, what we call in-house workshops, as well as public workshop, we notice that there are a lot of people uh, who would benefit from being in a better career. And a lot of people who ended up in companies, in certain fields, in domains, in, in certain positions and designations, purely out of chance uh, and rather than out of choice. Okay, so we're, we're using this this master training phenomenon as a as a sort of channel or as a as a medium for people to explore yet another career possibility. And from a master trainer perspective, I uh, I'd be able to share with you today what are the advantages. Okay, what happens when you get into the field? What can you expect? What is this? What is the whole phenomenon of master training all about? 
and I will also share with you, you know, some thoughts about sometimes, you know, how, uh, shall we say, uh, clueless uh, some of us might be about what career options there are out there. Okay, so <clears throat> just to share some stories with you, uh, I know this person, you know, who lives in, uh, who lives in California, you know, for, till the age of 54, he, uh, he was a filmmaker. And he made he made some films and you know and some became successes some some flopped and so on, but uh, at the age of fifty four, uh, he he actually uh, uh, you know went on to do a course in psychotherapy, and uh, he actually became a psychotherapist. So um, uh, it, it's 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 interesting to see nowadays this phenomenon. Um, this is a, this is the person I'm talking about is actually a friend's friend, and it's interesting to see nowadays this phenomenon uh, also happening in India, where in recent times I've been meeting people who are in their 50s and also in their 60s who are moving into training uh, as a career option, who are getting into different kinds of uh, uh, consulting practices, whether it's HR consulting, performance consulting, and so on. So that's that's certainly something that I'd I'd I'd, I'd, I'd like you to keep in mind. In fact, I want to also share with you a couple of other career shifts which I have personally seen. Uh, <clears throat> I was just going through CBS uh, news and uh, earlier this year, you know, I think sometime around April or May, they published the five best and the five worst jobs. And, you know, I was going through it expecting, you know, I, before, before I started reading the article, I said, let me see what I might think would be the five best jobs and what I might think are the five worst jobs. And uh, in fact, before I show them to you, I'd like you to make a guess. Okay, let me let me just start with, uh, say, the the five best jobs of 2016. I'd, I'd like some of you to take a guess, and you know, you can put your put your responses on the chat screen. You know, let's see how close to or far away from the mark you are. I'll, I'll just give you a, like a minute to do that. So, Kavin Prasannamurthy says training. Okay, thanks, Kavin. Any other responses? Uh, entrepreneurship, somebody says entrepreneurship, uh, Deepak says, Deepak Kotak says coaching, okay. All right, we have some more responses here. Uh, Sivram says people development, uh, somebody else again says consultancy. Startup, Suma says startups. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for that. Thank you for those responses. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I, I will share something about learning and coaching because you know that's that's really what where our interest lies. At least the people in this in this webinar. <clears throat> the, the first, the topmost is supposed to be diagnostic medical sonographer. Okay, so this is somebody who you know if you're if some if you're pregnant and you go for a scan, the person who does that you know he's he's, he's the sonographer. That's supposed to be the best job for 2016. Then it's supposed to be audiologist, okay? Once again, uh, a, a, a medicine-related field. Information security analyst is number three. Then comes statistician, and then comes data scientist. Okay, and, and there are there are a lot more. Uh, and I was I was I was so off the mark in my guesses. I looked at this and said, "Oh my God, I I I just wouldn't have guessed," <laughs> you know. And and let's take a look at the five worst jobs. The top of the list is actually. Uh, <clears throat> enlisting in the in, in the military, okay. So that's the uh, uh, that's actually the fifth. So when I say five worst, this is actually the uh, not the worst. This is actually the fifth uh, from the top. Then there is disc jockey, which is which is among among the worst jobs. Broadcaster, okay. So this is this this refers to television broadcaster. Then there is logger. I mean, this is the, really a person who's chopping wood. You know who's who's chopping down trees or you know uh, logging and, and clearing 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 pathways on the road and so on. And finally, newspaper reporter. And uh, it, it, what what was most interesting to me is not whether my guesses or your guesses were accurate or not. What was interesting to me is that you know the there is a new wave out there which is happening. And you know I'm a broadcaster to to be on TV at one point would, was was considered elite. You know, or to be a newspaper reporter was considered to be phenomenal. But uh, as you can see, 
the priorities have changed. I mean, that's not the case anymore. There are jobs which are almost like desk jobs, uh, where which you could be sitting down in a room and doing by yourself, which actually are rated the best jobs. And you know, I was also it, it was also interesting to see that uh, jobs which might not require that much of teamwork, interaction with different people, are in fact rated on top. So uh, the point that I'd like to make is that perhaps it's time for us to open our uh, mind and eyes to the fact that there are new career opportunities out there and look at some of them. So this is another person who I knew. I mean, I actually know him personally and I did um, talk about him in one of the uh, webinars. He was a banker with, with Citibank and uh, he did that soon after his graduation. He worked there for many years and then he realized, you know what, uh, what what's he doing in a bank? And you know, that just wasn't the place where he's meant to be. So he started designing clothes for his colleagues and he did a course on, on fashion design and now he's a full-fledged fashion designer. He, he's actually got his own label. You can you can check him out. It's called Divakar Mohan. So, uh, you know, that, that's one huge career shift which I've seen in close quarters. But somebody who's a banker, that too with a place like Citibank, you know, completely making a transition. This is another guy who's <coughs> who we met recently, he walked into our office. Uh, I, I don't have permission to use his name, but uh, you know, he, uh, as you can see from the image, he was an IT programmer until about six months ago. What he's doing now is photography. And uh, he's a career photographer and he takes photographs for, right now he's doing every assignment that comes to him. He's doing weddings, he's doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, construction photography, building photography, he's doing photo for, portfolios and, and so on, but over time he wants to specialize, uh, you know, on a few things. So, um, folks, I, I'd, li I'd like you to keep this in mind that a career transition is possible, okay? And I'm not suggesting here that, you know, all of you change your careers or do something different. My only point and interest in this whole phenomenon is that you spend a big part of your uh, of your life in, in office or, or doing work, you know, as a consultant or, or as, a, as an individual contributor. It is important that you spend this time doing something that you love because that's going to really change the game for you, okay? So let me, let me get into, you know, uh, a career like master training, you know, what is it and what could it offer you? Um, okay, so we have, <clears throat> Somebody asking a question. Okay, Shivram says, sometimes your voice gets off or sleeps down. Okay, so Shivram, I uh, just want to let you know that we constantly have a person from Bodhi who's, uh, you know, in uh, also part of the webinar and who's on a different network. And uh, we constantly check and get feedback. In fact, that person sitting sitting uh, just across from the hallway where I'm sitting and uh, I'm, they, they, if if there is any disturbance or change in my audio, I, I'll get a I'll get a whistle blow from here. Okay, so just 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 check your internet connection, and I hope you can hear me clearly now. All right. So what is master training? So uh, some things which I um, want to highlight about master training. Okay, so it will give you a clearer picture. First of all, I I want to highlight that you know master training means something. Unfortunately, in many organizations recently, somebody called us from, um, okay, let me not name that company, uh, a very well-known manufacturing company and said, she said she wants to attend our master trainer. And we said, like, what have you done? What's your background? How much of experience do you have? And uh, she barely had any experience. Despite that, she said she's already a master trainer. Now, master trainer as a term and as a certification is very loosely used, but at Bodhi, the master trainer certification means something. It's a very rigorous program. Those of you who have attended the train the trainer and found it to be rigorous, uh, be aware that the master trainer is uh, even more of a boot camp. Okay, and uh, it it's also focuses on certain things. For example, it's a program which is for people who have already been training for some time. You know, we have a lot of trainers who walk into our office. I mean, like you know, I keep telling people. If I'm sitting in the Bangalore office on a on a particular week, I would easily easily be talking to about 20 trainers, and you know our extended team, uh, you know every month talks to literally hundreds of people who have either shifted to training or who are planning to shift to training 
or who are considering training as a career option, something like that. And one of the questions that experienced trainers keep asking us is, what do I do next? I'm already a trainer, I'm really good, I've worked with several organizations, I've done several programs, I've got great feedback, I'm known in the market, and so on. And they're wondering where to go next. This is a program for people like that. People who feel that they've already cut it, and, they, and they're looking at moving to the next level. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we do this, uh, this, is, this is one of the programs where we actually have a conversation with the participants before selecting them. Unlike the uh, train the trainer or the foundation course, because we want to make sure the person sitting in the room is somebody who would benefit from the program. We want to make sure the person sitting in the room is somebody who would take back value. And we are very okay to do it with very small groups. In fact, the last time we, we've even run this program once with just two people in it. One gentleman from Nigeria and uh, a lady from Bangalore, both very experienced trainers. Okay, the other part of the story is, it is about mastery. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole phenomenon going on there where people are in different sorts of professions. In fact, you should ask yourself this question right now. I don't know what you're, what, what you're doing right now uh, for a living, but whatever you're doing, were you among the best at your job? Did you have absolute mastery over what you were doing? Could you, could you actually go out there and you know be be at a spot where you hardly met people who were who are much better than you were you know these are some of the indicators for us of mastery so this program largely focuses on getting people to understand and getting them kick started on a journey of mastery mastery in what it completely depends on them if you're a person who says i i really want to become a fantastic coach and I want, to re, uh, I want to become the best in this area. We tell them, what does it mean to be a master in this area? What does it mean to be a, a fantastic coach? Okay, so that's, that's one of the uh, dimensions of this. And uh, by mastery, I don't mean getting a certification or getting, you know, if you look out there, some of the best people in their fields are actually people who don't necessarily have a certification. You know, some of the best entrepreneurs in the world are actually dropouts from college. Some of, the, some of the best artists in the world have also never had formal art, uh, you know, or fine arts training, okay? Uh, some of the most successful artists were not, uh, I mean, uh, some of the most successful actors weren't, uh, shall we say, dynastic, uh, you know, actors. They were people who got into acting as first generation actors in their family and, and really worked their way to the top. So that's, that's something that this program certainly focuses on. Uh, this is our recent workshop here. Uh, I think there's somebody, there's also somebody from uh, that workshop on this, uh, I think Deepak Kotak, you will see yourself there, Deepak Kotak, okay. Uh, but anyway, the point that I want to make is the master trainer will help you train other trainers. So you see, the ball game is a little different, okay. The ball game is a different in the sense that there is a difference between you training people who will go ahead and use this competence directly. For example, if you're doing a time management training, uh, the game is slightly different when you're training a group of managers to become, to get better at managing their time. Okay, that's one way to do it. But on the other hand, if you're going to train a, a group of people and these trainers have to train somebody else to manage their time, you know, it, you, you are in a way two levels up. And not only do you have to ensure that the People you train are good at time management and understand this, but also ensure that they're able to transfer this with the same intensity to somebody else who then gets to manage their time well. So there are some nuances to this. Uh, it's, it's different in the way it's approached. It's different in, in, the, in the way that it's done. And um, therefore, uh, it, it's, it's, it's slightly more difficult. But at the same time, it's, it's fantastically rewarding in the sense that, you know, if you, if you get to train trainers, the whole, whole game changes for you. You know, that, that's one of the things that makes you a master trainer. You know, for, for, the long, for, for the longest time, a master trainer was only seen as a person who trains other trainers. Without much focus on, on things like mastery and, you know, without much focus on, you know, moving to the next level. So that, that's certainly one thing that I'd, I'd like to highlight. Uh, the, the other point that I'd like to make is, 
about being a specialist. <clears throat> you know, I, I keep telling people who I meet, uh, you know, especially people who are getting into the field of training and uh, those of you who've spoken with me, had a conversation with me or attended any of my workshop would have heard this. Uh, I keep telling people that in training there are two things. There's what to train and there's how to train. So if you go out there and introduce yourself as a trainer to somebody, one of the questions they might well ask you is, what kind of a trainer? What do you train people for? What's your area of expertise? They're going to ask you this. So if you tell somebody you're a trainer, they'll say, what, what trainer? What kind of trainer? And then you say, oh, I'm a leadership trainer. Or you say, I'm a project management trainer. Or you say, I'm a trainer on XYZ. Uh, this workshop, the master training uh, trainer certification is a little different. In the sense that, first of all, you would move from being a generalist into being a specialist. Okay, so one thing which you can definitely expect to see is you will walk out of the program saying, I'm not a trainer who does all kinds of trainings under the sun. And these are the most dangerous kinds. You know, people who say, I do voice and accent training, I do leadership training, I do decision making, I do, uh, you know, changing diapers, I do everything under the sun. And these are the trainers who are taken least seriously. So one thing is you will walk out with a focus on being a specialist. The other thing, this workshop is beyond just domain specialization. It is, it's beyond just saying that, you know, you will become a better leadership trainer, which you will. And to a, to a large extent, which you might already be even before you come for this workshop. Here, the real specialization that you'll develop is a specialization in training as a field and a domain. You will be able to walk, walk out and tell people that I'm, I'm a leadership trainer. That's largely what I do, but I'm also a specialist in the field of training. I, 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 can, I can really help you understand training better. I can help you train better. I can help you train other people and help them develop more effectively and so on. So is there a focus on a particular specialization? Yes. In the train the trainer, there is no such focus. The focus is on how to train more effectively. But here, it is about how to train more effectively as well as on how to be a specialist in the field of training. And that really brings me to my next point, which is that therefore, you would become a person you know, by going through this master trainer, or if you're a master trainer, you would become a person who can provide training as a solution and not just do training programs. You know, a lot of trainers out there, they're stuck in the treadmill of doing training programs. You know, I, I meet trainers and I ask them, hey, what, I mean, recently when I was doing a workshop in Bangalore, in the, sometimes I bump into some of our own trainers who, also happen to consult with other companies and they have their own clients and so on. So in the banquet hall opposite, I meet this trainer and I said, hey, how are you? And he said, how are you? What are you doing? And I told him I'm doing this workshop and I asked him, what are you doing these days? And he said, I did a workshop last Friday for uh, this bank on this. I did a workshop last Monday for this company on this. And I asked him, so why did you do that workshop? Uh, why do, you think, why do you think this bank required this training on now? What's happening? And he said uh, they wanted to develop that, I suppose he said sales training. They wanted to make them sell better. And I asked him a few more questions and he had no idea why it was important for that bank to get their people to sell better at this point. What is going wrong? What is the larger picture? That is something, that's a treadmill that you will not be stuck in. If if you, if you attend or get certified by us in, in master training. Master training is about using training as a tool or providing training as a solution. So you will go to an organization, okay, and tell them, look, uh, you might have a lot of problems. Suppose you have 20 of your big problems. I'm going to look at them and tell you, there are 10 problems out here which can be addressed by providing training. And in those 10 areas, I can help you out. I can tell you what kind of training, I can tell you whether it's internal or external, I can tell you who will do the training, I can train your people to train on those areas, okay? I can tell you which can be done online, which can be done offline, which can be done through classroom, which, can, which should be done outbound. I can also train and coach people to make sure that some of these battles are overcome. So what happens is, you know, you're using training as a solution. You're not doing a training day and walking out, all right? 
So that's that's uh, I, I think there's a lot more to master training, but let me stop there. Uh, I hope this gives you a sense of what this program is. Now I want to just come back to what we what we were talking about, which is about a career transition. And uh, I do understand I'm somebody who made a career transition myself from the field of design engineering and and being a, a you know um, a design engineer and, and and a consultant to being a trainer. <clears throat> so. Uh, if you shift to a career in training, what could you, especially if you shift to a career in, 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 in and being a, being a master trainer, what can you expect to see? So here are some things that you can certainly expect to see. Okay, uh, before I get into that, I have some questions here. Okay. All right. So, okay, so we have, uh, I'm going to just, uh, we have three three questions. I, 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 I'm just going to take them as we as we go along. Okay, we have one more question. We just came in. Okay, so I, I'm going to take these questions as we go go along. Yeah. So, well, one of the things that you can expect uh, in master training. Okay, now uh, I want to just answer one of these questions here because it's it's very relevant to what what we what what I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> one is the field of consulting. Okay, and uh, we have somebody um, Suma who says. Could you please let me know how to take up behavioral training? Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to I'm going to use Suma's question to actually explain the slide. Now, what do you mean by behavioral training? What it means is you are training somebody on bringing about some sort of a behavioral change. Why? Because in the circumstances of their life, or in the company that they work in, or in the team that they are part of. Their current behavior is probably not their best strategy. Okay. Uh, in fact, Suma goes on to say, "I have been part of a startup for training. Okay, a founder of the startup. Okay, great. So uh, that's fantastic, Suma. So in fact, this is something which, which would particularly benefit someone like you. So if you want to, if you want to do this, what would happen is this is what happens with a lot of our own trainers. And by the way, lot of the things which I'm sharing with you here." is the outcome or are the outcomes of conversations which we've had with a lot of our most successful trainers and Bodhi has a pool of about 100 trainers okay and when I say 100 it's not just a metaphorical figure we actually have more than literally more than 100 trainers with, uh, you know <clears throat> who are impaneled with us and we've spoken to some of the most successful ones and we've asked them what they have done in order to be successful and here are some things that they've shared with us so in behavioral training, since you're trying to change or alter somebody's behavior for, for, for the better, okay, that's, that's your area of expertise. Now, if you, if you look at master training, you will, you see so many areas of consulting here, you know, giving advice, consulting for projects, consulting for performance, consulting for operations plans and so on. So you will go and say, if I just pick two of these, if I just pick strategy, which is what you have here on the right top, okay, you have strategy. And if I pick performance, okay, <clears throat> and let me also pick something like efficient. Now, how can I use this for behavioral training? Here's the deal. There are, there are multiple ways. The first thing, if I was a behavioral trainer and if I was a master trainer, I would go to a company and tell them, not that I will do a behavioral training for you, okay? I will go and ask them, talking about strategy, I will go say, have you looked at using behavior as a strategy for to achieve your goals okay to to get to where you want to have you done that and and we at Bodhi we've done this for one of our clients uh, recently not recently I think about two three years back the this was a sales team and they were constantly looking at do they have the domain expertise do they have the uh, qualification do they have the product knowledge the, the the experience in that country and so on to achieve their sales goals. But we went ahead and told them that, look, one of the reasons why people don't achieve their sales goals is because they don't have the de desirable behaviors for, for achievement. So have you looked at that? And interestingly, they had, they had some sense of it, but they had not really looked at it, okay? So what we did was we profiled a lot of them, understood their behavior. And if I come to efficiency, what, is, what will make you more efficient at the end of the day? Just say you're a you're a person who just does four hours of useful work in a day. 
What will make you efficient? Obviously, a change in your behavior. Even if you do one simple thing like wake up a little earlier and spend two hours doing something that will take you closer to your goals. And by the way, there's something that I suggest to all of you. If you want to get closer to your goals, at least spend two hours a day doing something which will take you closer to your goals. Okay? If you just make this one behavior change, without doubt, after a month, you'll be much closer to your goal than you would have been if you hadn't made that behavior change. So there again, I'm talking about being more efficient as a, as a behavioral element. Okay. And the third thing is about performance. So going back to the sales story, what we realized is this team whose behavior we analyzed, the sales team, one of the reasons they weren't meeting their targets or achieving their goals is because they had some behaviors which were not supporting them. For example, they were extremely poor in follow-up. They would get new clients, do some work with them, but not follow up. And that client at the end of that assignment would never come back. Okay. Another thing that they would <clears throat> do is they would make new contacts, start talking to people. When it gets really hot, they would not push hard enough to close the sale. And there would be lots of business which is lying there, hot, lukewarm, then becoming cold, hot, lukewarm, becoming cold without closing. So when we, when we said that, look, you need to be trained on being more assertive and a little more pushy to close your sales. Eventually, the team started performing phenomenally well. And all this is because of behavioral training. So Suma, one thing which you could well do is go ahead and pitch this sort of a solution, which, is, which revolves around behavioral change. And not only that, telling them, look, you are a 3,000 member organization. Suma alone cannot train all these 3,000 people. If you want me to train them, even if I train 15 people a day, it's going to take me like 200, 300 man days. I, I hope that number is correct. I might be getting it wrong. Okay, my calculator is right here. 300 divided by 50. Okay, so around, around that much. <clears throat> so then, obviously, your approach would be to say that I'm a master trainer. I can train about 50 of your most efficient people, maybe your senior leaders, maybe your trainers, maybe your HR team, they can go ahead and train the rest of your organization on behavioral change. So that's something, that sort of consulting is certainly something that you'd be able to do uh, with, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, with, with master training. So you can do consulting in multi multiple fields, going and pitching yourself as a consultant, not as a standalone trainer. Okay. Uh, there's one more question. Mm, okay, let me just, so here's a person Okay, don't worry, I will not share your name because this person has uh, sent it directly to me. See, this person's question, okay, let me just bring it to the next point. <clears throat> this person's question is that I've been in the training field for 12 plus years and I have done programs on, um, okay, there are some programs here with, with the names of which I don't want to mention, but uh, the person is saying that they have 12, uh, he has 12 plus years of training and he's done some of the popular programs which are in the industry and uh, now he's <clears throat> wanting to know how this master trainer will help him. Okay. Uh, thanks for that question, uh, sir. Okay. Uh, I, I want to just tell you that uh, I was in uh, Spain, in Barcelona some uh, months ago, not some months ago, oh, it's, it's, it's many months ago. This was last December and the beginning of this jam. And that's the, that's the Antoni Gaudi Museum. And this, this is one of his masterpieces. And you know, if you look at this, I'm sure you will, you will recognize this pattern. You know, this, when you see this sort of a tile design, you know, the, 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 the mosaics broken like this and, and put in this format, this is something that is very, very Antoni Gaudi. And uh, it's his style. So wherever you see it, you know, people say, oh, this, this is a very Gaudi style, you know. Just like if you, if you look at, um, you know, Picasso, Picasso's work, he did something called as cubism. When you look at cubism, you say, oh, this is Picasso. Okay. So to answer your question, uh, what I see from your question is you have done a lot of interesting programs and these are all programs which are created and owned and licensed by other organizations, not by you. You might be, I'm guessing, uh, okay, there's another... Yeah, thank the, thanks for that. 
yeah so you are a licensed trainer okay very good so you are a licensed trainer for all these products okay but what the master trainer which will help you do is to create something unique okay you know the question that people really ask is you are doing programs from created by uh, Stephen Covey you're doing programs created by Edward de Bono you're doing programs created or you know concepts you're sharing with me concepts from Robin Sharma the question is what have you done what is your own contribution what do you bring onto the table do you bring anything onto the table if throughout your life you're going to be a trainer who trains groups on other people's philosophies uh, one thing I can assure you is that you will get some amount of work okay but in terms of moving to the next level it could be quite challenging all right in fact there are many people who've ended up becoming trainers and speakers because they had something unique to offer because they had something so unique to offer that people would want to invite them to speak invite them to do a training yes so my um, point to you is that as a master trainer you should have something unique and this is something that I urge you to think about. Think about what do you really bring on to the table? What's your unique experience? Okay. What, is, uh, what have you created, contributed, discovered about life, about success, about happiness, about anything under the sun? And if you can package this as a program and offer it to anybody, then you have a solution. I mean, there are a lot of systems out there. I don't want to name these systems. These are religious systems non-religious systems, these are um, different forums which actually take information from the, from, uh, you know, uh, something that philosophers had said in the past, something that different religious leaders have said and they have packaged them as training programs and even such people have become successful and made a lot of money and grown. So if you create something of your own, there's no, there's no doubt about the fact that you will move to the next level as a trainer, as a coach, as a consultant. Imagine if you have a coaching model, since some of you brought this out earlier saying that, you know, you suspect that coaching is a budding profession. Well, I can tell you in India, coaching, training, uh, learning and development is still a nascent field. There's a huge market for it. You know, even if another, <clears throat> you know, couple of lakh people enter it, there's still a lot of space and there's still enough money to be made and enough uh, opportunity out there. So if you have a unique coaching model and if you say if somebody is stuck in a career transition, let me just take something so unique okay, and, and specific. If somebody is stuck in a career transition, I can help this person find the career of their dreams because I have a unique coaching model which will help you help me do that. And can you imagine if you spoke to somebody who is very confused in life and doesn't know where they, where they are heading and if you told them if you spoke to them and did like five coaching sessions with them and they are able to change their lives and find the career and job of their dreams, he is going to go and tell everybody and their grandmothers about you. And that's business straight away. All right. So one thing which you can expect to see in this master training and which also I urge you to do whether you come for this workshop or not is look at creating something unique. <clears throat> and during the program, we'll be doing a lot of exercise to sort of keep pushing you in that direction, to deliberately, consciously push you in that direction and make you create at least some things unique before you leave the, leave the five-day workshop. And that's a good starting point. A lot of our past participants have been able to, you know, uh, it's, been, it's, it's helped them catapult themselves to, to, to a journey of, you know, of, of creation. All right. <clears throat> the next thing which I want to share is really about learning from multiple disciplines. So as you can see here, uh, it's pretty obvious that I'm trying to allude to, to training. I mean, I'm sorry, to, to theater uh, and drama. So we pick multiple fields. I mean, uh, let me just talk about two of them. First is about theater. There, there are a lot of lessons to be learned from any field. Like for example, um, I'm sure you would agree that if you want to be more successful in life and you know, be better at anything that you do, there are a lot of lessons to be learned from the field of sport. Sports people are mentally tough. They know how to get things. They know how to take. They know how to lose. They know how to win. They know how to take things in the right spirit. They know how to perform under pressure. And these are all qualities that a person carries. 
If you learn them, don't you think you can live a better life? I'm sure you can. And that's the same with something like theater. There are a lot of things which happen in theater, which if you imbibe in, a, in, in say a training program, or if you use, or if you learn and reproduce in a training program, you can increase the effectiveness and the quality of your training. Okay, so uh, in, in this master trainer <clears throat> uh, certification, one of the things that we do is we help people uh, look at uh, different fields and, and we just take one or two fields as samples. Like for example, another field that we take is literature. I mean, there's a lot to be learned from the field of literature. Just from the way language is used, just from the way, um, you know, words, the, you know, the play of words. And can you use the play of words even to just improve the quality of your presentation by, by you know, juggling them around differently and putting them up on your slides? You know, can you use quotations in a particular way? Can you, can you use ideas of literature for you to write better and therefore become a more sought after consultant in your field? Yes. So we do this with one or two fields and by then participants get a sense of how to look at a completely new field. Maybe like rock climbing and what are lessons I can learn from rock climbing which will make me a better trainer, a better consultant, a better human being. Yes, and that's something which, uh, uh, that's a quality if you pick up, you will realize that you have access for, to so much of information that you can just sit one day and watch a carpenter and learn lessons from that carpenter. You know, this is, this is really what, this is really what NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming is all about. It's about reproducing excellence. Yes, so if you can look at how somebody is doing something excellently, you can learn lessons from there and reproduce excellence in other fields, which is, which is essentially what uh, Richard Bandler and John Grinder, the, the two co-creators of NLP did. All right, <clears throat> I can see the clock is ticking. Uh, I have a question here and I want to just quickly take this. And the question is, uh, how much of reflection, self-driven work takes place in the Master Trainer workshop? So, uh, <clears throat> since this is a private message, I just want to, uh, you know, not mention the person's name, but uh, let me just tell you, you can expect there's about 20 to 30 percent of this workshop which is reflection okay and when I say workshop it doesn't necessarily mean the five days when you sit there from 9 30 to 5 30. It could also be reflection which happens at home. It could also be reflections which happens uh, sometimes after an activity, sometimes before an activity all right. The rest of it would be I think about 50 percent would be activities, exercises, uh, a lot of self-driven, participant-centered, you know, experiencing of, of different things, all right? And uh, the remaining of about 20 to 30 percent would be a combination of discussions and idea sharing and maybe about 5 percent of, say, uh, PPT-driven learning. <clears throat> so that's, I hope, I hope that answers your question. All right. Uh, here's one more thing which I want to share, which you would we can definitely take back from uh, the master training, which is the secrets of icons. So just like I was talking to you about learning the lessons from different fields, just like that you also can learn lessons from different people. I mean, I'm just looking at this something that Steve Jobs said: "Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow know what you truly want to become." Um, I mean, I, I meet a lot of people who are in this dilemma of saying, should I follow my heart or should I do what my family wants me to do? Should I do what I want or should I do what my parents want me to do? Should I do what I know is right or should I do what looks good from the outside? You know, there are, there are all these dilemmas. So there is a way of studying the success story of other people. So you see, this workshop is not... It's not a train the trainer. It's about mastery. It's about multiple channels to mastery. And it's about you learning, imbibing, and being able to reproduce that. Yes? Uh, that's Richard Branson on the top left. And he says, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity and you're not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. <clears throat> In fact, uh, I just got reminded of this when I think I can count on one person 
or two people every month to call me. It could be one of our past participants. They would call me and say something like this. They would say, you know, like uh, this, this big company, uh, let's just say, you know, Accenture called me and uh, they want me to do this program. It's a big project. It's a few lakhs worth and uh, it's going to take about one month to complete. And they want me to start in the beginning of December. So can you, can you suggest somebody who can do it? Because I'm not confident of doing it. I can't take it up. And you'll be amazed at the number of times I've told people, just take it up. Just take it up. I want you to first take it up, call them up and say, yes, I'll take it up. And you have an entire month. You have an entire month to go. You can prepare everything that you need to about that workshop, for that workshop. Just block everything out for the next one month and just focus on the Accenture assignment and on getting it right. You know, you know what would happen at the end of it? Time and again, I've seen people who've come back to me and said, wow, thank God I took up that assignment. It was like doing an MBA. It, it was such a fantastic training ground for me because in the process of doing that two month Accenture assignment, I became a much better trainer. I was far more equipped. I could, I had to learn, I had to force myself to learn new things. And all this was done so meaningfully because it had a lot more meaning because I had to finish this Accenture assignment well. And now that it went well, it shot up my confidence level through the roof because I feel confident about taking up any other assignment. And none of this would have happened if I had just said, oh, you think the assignment is too big for you? Great, I have some trainers who will take it up and here you go. These are the numbers. So <clears throat> like this, I mean, this is what uh, Richard Branson said. The point is that, you know, like this, there are icons which who have said all sorts of things. And also they've lived their life. They've not just said something. They've also lived their lives in certain ways. How can you look at their lives, learn from it, learn lessons from it, and then use them in your own life? <clears throat> okay, so that's really what this section is about. Uh, I hope that gives you a sense of, you know, what the master trainer does. And I want to just share this with you. Uh, Bodhi is um, very closely associated with the International Association of Facilitators or the IAF, okay, which, which now has a, a, a pretty strong presence in India. Okay, you can check out their website, IAFworld. I think it's IAFworld.org or uh, IAFasia.com. I mean, both different websites. There's the Asia chapter and the uh, IAF, uh, you know, uh, world. So. Uh, at the Master Trainer, one more thing which you will be equipped with is we use a lot of the best practices or the techniques of facilitation in uh, the Master Trainer certification and you will also learn these techniques. And what, what it does is you sh you'll be surprised to see that facilitation is a field by itself. And you can become a consultant just doing facilitation. And the beauty is a big part of facilitation is content free. What I mean by content free is you don't have to be a, a leadership expert. You don't have to be a, a management expert, a planning and organizing expert, or a person who's into lateral thinking, creative thinking, or anything like that. Yes, you can, a facilitator, you can just be a facilitator for, like I recently went to one of the big automotive companies in, they're probably among the biggest in India. Uh, I, I went there to, to give a talk. And just before my talk started, there was a facilitator there on stage. All he was doing was conducting a meeting for about 200 people. By standing on stage, getting their ideas out, putting them up on the PPT, writing them up on different chart papers, collating them, combining them, clustering them, and then eventually presenting this information back to the audience. And I'm sure he was getting paid a bomb for it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we have... One or two more questions here. Suma says, awesome solution, Vinesh. Okay, thanks, Suma. Uh, Chandra Leka, uh, could you please share the link again for facilitators group? Okay, can somebody from the Bodhi team please uh, share the IF uh, link? Uh, somebody is just doing that. Okay, uh, yes, uh, Chandra Leka, the link will be shared with you. Okay, so the, the point is that you will be introduced to facilitation. You will be taught some 
fantastic techniques which are enough for you to go out and say, look, uh, I'm a consultant, but uh, I want you to know that I can also facilitate meetings, I can facilitate uh, group discussions. You know, uh, recently I facilitated a conversation for about eight people. They are eight of the most important people in a company. This is an IT services company in Bangalore. The idea was they wanted to revisit their goals and vision for 2020 and uh, just sort of fine tune that and see is that what they really want to do? Is that what they, is that where they want to be in life? <clears throat> All right. So um, uh, in fact, I don't know if that link is correct. It says air world. Can you just check that link? I think there's a mistake in that link. Okay. All right. Uh, the, the right link will be put up. So uh, that's about facilitation. <clears throat> I think the, the clock is seriously ticking. Uh, I want to just wrap up. We have about, let me see. We have eight minutes left. Okay, nine minutes left. Okay. Suma says, I hope this is a good sales pitch for anything. <laughs> yes, Suma, I think this is a good sales pitch. Yeah, so uh, I want to just share some final ideas with you, final thoughts, and I'm happy to take some more questions before we wrap up. Why master training might suit you? There are some things which I've seen repeatedly. Okay, one is that we all come with a lot of past experience. And uh, it's interesting to see that this past experience is what makes us who we are. And people are constantly out there trying to, uh, you know, learn new things, develop more, get some certifications. Well, all that is good. All that is fantastic. But you should also be aware that you have, you already have some fantastic things inside you. There, there's a reason why you're 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, I don't know how old you are. And you've managed to live a life the way you have. You have some phenomenal qualities in the, in, in, inside you. And you've gained a lot of experience as a result of just living this life. What happens in the master trainer is, it helps you tap into that. And it helps you say, just like Richard Branson was saying, that if, you, if you're doubtful about taking up something, say yes and then prepare for it. That's his formula. I'm sure you have your own success formulae. And it's important for you to understand what they are because that's something that you will truly, strongly be able to stand for. And when it's so strong in you, for you to share it with somebody becomes a no-brainer. And when you share it with somebody, they take you seriously. They realize that you're somebody who's walked the talk. So that's something which I, 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 I uh, you know, you, you will also learn in this workshop, but I mean, as a master trainer, that's something for you to tap into. Okay, cascading using all your past experience. In fact, uh, there was somebody who I met recently. He is on, he is on this uh, webinar. I don't want to mention his name, but he told me how he, when he joined the Merchant Navy, he went into this, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, room and he, he refused to come out. And finally the captain got him out and tied him up to the, uh, you know, at the front of the ship and the, it was, there was a storm and it was shaking and the salt water was hitting him and he just puked and puked and puked. And finally he got over this. And I said, can you imagine somebody like that coming and training a group and telling that group about resilience, telling that group about handling difficult situations. They would straight away want to just listen to this person and imbibe everything that he has to say. So using your past experience is certainly one thing. Uh, the other thing is it's certainly lucrative. Because there are, I mean, straight away, if I look at somebody who's just a trainer and somebody who's a master trainer, the price points are different. Because what happens is, as a trainer, you're training a group of, say, 15 or 20 people. As a master trainer, what you're doing is you are <clears throat> actually, uh, you know, empowering a group of 20 people to do a lot more trainings in the years, months and years to come. I mean, I keep sharing this with some of our train-the-trainer participants. We had some clients who would easily give us 10 to 15 lakhs of business a year, easily. We have trained and certified some people in their system and uh, made them master trainers. And you'd be surprised that we've never heard from them after that. And you know, It's unfortunate, but the, the point that I'm trying to make is they single-handedly are able to handle all the training requirements. So if somebody is going to gain or save 15 lakhs a year, 
don't you think they'll be willing you willing to pay you just two lakhs to help achieve that and finally <clears throat> i can't i can't help but mention or talk about the satisfaction that you derive of impacting life because just the scale is much larger you know one of the big uh, it giants of uh, one of the indian it giants um contacted us and they wanted to train about you know uh, 5000 people and like i mentioned earlier to suma that training 5000 people even if you did 15 people uh, a day and mostly it's not going to be a days program it might be a two day program okay that would be something like 650 or 700 days of training which means you would be getting up on every weekday wearing your tie dress getting dressed you know uh, carrying your laptop and going to the <clears throat> their office for almost 2 years and it is simply it's simply unworkable and maybe at the end of 2 years the requirement even the requirement of the people might have changed yes so what happens is it's a far easier even in even just in the interest of scale for you to train and certify a group of say 20 of the trainers and if 20 people can do programs this whole requirement will be finished in a month and we've done that in a lot of cases and therefore you impact far more lives you impact far more people and there's this huge satisfaction of creating so much of impact because as an individual you have real limitations in terms of how many lives you can touch but as a master trainer you are not just touching people's lives directly you're touching the lives of people who are going to in turn go and touch the lives of others <clears throat> so that's something which i want to wrap up the story with uh i do have some more questions okay that's the if link which is posted at 1152 that's the if world link you can click click on it okay suma says could you please your time i would like to have a quick call with you hope it is fine regards reply private okay i'm sorry that is a private message i <laughs> read it out chandralekha says thank you okay so um, i have one or two more questions which i'm going to take which are also sent to me there is a question here which says that uh, how many master trainers there are in the country and uh, what is it that makes the master trainer okay um, okay so uh, sir i uh, you know since you've just messaged me in private i i'm suspecting that you're asking me this because you're wondering if i do the master trainer certification how unique does that make make me okay let me tell you with all the things that i have explained so far if you are going to be a master trainer and if you have all these qualities without doubt it makes you fantastically unique and sought after in the country but if you're just talking about master trainer in terms of a tag or a certification i'm sure if you go to linkedin you will see so many people are master trainers but uh, you'll be surprised to see some of them have less than 2 years of work experience okay <clears throat> so master trainer isn't about it isn't about experience i must confess it isn't about uh certification it is and though if you attend our master trainer you will be given a certificate of competence okay not just a certificate of participation or completion you will be given a certificate of competence once you meet meet our standards but more importantly it is about your own competence if you can produce results if you can get other people to produce those same results in others if you can solve the problems of organizations the challenges they have and provide them solutions through training okay if you understand the nuances of mastery and help yourself as well as anybody else achieve that i think these are some of the things that make you a master trainer and if you can do that that will certainly make you unique i think there's no there's simply no debate about that fact okay um i think we are running short of time let me just take this one last question anyway that is the last question <clears throat> there's a person who says i have about uh, 30 years of experience okay retired recently from okay i don't want to mention your organization's name okay and now looking at the okay okay so here's a person who has 30 years 30 years of work experience retired recently from Uh, a public sector and now wants to be a trainer and coach and consultant so just to answer your question i think i've already answered this but to answer this yes certainly it would help you 
and and I'm also looking at the designation that from which you retired it would certainly help somebody like you because one of the things that you gather through so many years of experience is that you've learned a lot of things and this is something that you would be able to share with everybody as a result of your own past learnings and I want to very quickly tell you this that uh, I was recently talking to a sales guy he's got about uh, <clears throat> 20 plus years of sales experience and he was wondering you know what what can I train people for I can only be a sales trainer and I was like asking him some questions and it was slowly becoming clear to him that one of the things that sales people are good at us is setting goals setting goals and achieving them because sales is a target driven field so goal setting could very well become his area of training another thing that sales people are really good at is negotiation so you could become a negotiation trainer negotiation skills trainer Another thing that salespeople are really good at is stress management because sales is a high pressure job in most companies and he had worked in some high pressure situations. Now he can become a stress management trainer. So you see, you worked for 30 years. Obviously, you've learned a lot of things as a result of these 30 years of work experience. And I, I, I mean, I can tell you more about this if you are part of this workshop, but very quickly, it's a good idea for all of us to reflect and see what are our secret formulae for success and see how we can package them and pass them on to somebody else to, to reproduce our own success story. So folks, I think we've overshot time. Thank you very much. I hope you found this session useful. This is Vinesh Sukumaran signing off. Uh, the contact details are on the screen. You can make a note of them. That's our website. Those are the, land, uh, the phone lines. And um, I will keep them up here. But uh, I know we've overshot time. Thank you very much. Uh, you've been very patient. I, found, I hope you found this session useful. Have a wonderful rest of the day and have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you.